Cape Mill Falls here, seven days of rebellion in song. And I'm standing here, here at the graveside of Teresa Brayton in County Kildare. And there's no better place to sing this next song, Come on the Morn. It's very important that we remember the role the women played in the events of Easter week and the subsequent years rolling up to it. They were they played a major part in the success of the, the revolution and they perhaps were not given the credit that they deserved in the initial years after the events. But today we remember them with pride and I, I want to remind you that Theresa Brayton has a claim to be the <coughs> poetess of the events of Easter week. She. <coughs> She was born here, uh, Teresa Boylan, and her father, indeed, was Hugh Boylan, her mother, Elizabeth Downs. And she was baptised in St. Cocos Church in Kilcock, in County Kildare, on the 5th of July, and she, uh, 1868, and she died on the 19th of August, 1943. Now, this monument to her was unveiled by President Eamon de Valera on the 18th of October 1959. And she was filled with patriotism and she expressed those feelings many times to her gift of talent as a poetess and a bard. And she was on first name terms with all the men of 1916. When Teresa Brayton emigrated from here to America, she came back in 1912 to meet all of those men and it, uh, the, the people involved in the planning of the insurrection. In America, she was at every function, indeed, to raise money to bring back, uh, to bring and to help and support uh, the fight back here in Ireland. And of course, she would have received wonderful inspiration from the man who was the, essentially, the go-to man in America, John Devoy. And he was another Kildare man. And in many ways, I suppose, Theresa Brayton fulfilled a void in terms of women's representation, and uh, she did so in, in, with a, the more enormous talent that she had uh, to write poems in tribute with her beautiful words. Now, I want to remind you that when the execution of the 1916 leaders was announced in the House of Commons by Prime Minister Asquith. The Tories, the Liberals and the Irish Parliamentary Party rose and cheered. And those cheers, those cheers were heard long after the revolutionary leaders, Padraig Pearce, James Connolly, Thomas Macdonough, Joseph Plunkett, Amy Kent, Tom Clark, were executed. They were heard by our exiles and they were heard by many most loudly who were fighting in British uniforms in the continent during the First World War, which I believe was the most unnecessary war in history. They were fighting in France and they had seen the prejudice and indeed the anti-Irish feeling that was expressed in England. Now, following the executions of the 1916 leaders, indeed many of the world leaders were outraged with the fact that so many young men, and particularly James Connolly, was executed in a dying state. It's, it seemed the vengeance and the bloodletting would never cease. So the British government stopped the execution, not because they wanted to, but because public opinion around the world indeed was so much against them, they had no choice. And. Theresa Brayton wrote this lovely poem about the, um, the men of 1916. Now, she also indeed received, to remind you just how important her words were, she received a letter uh, from Constance Markovich. Following the executions, the, the, the Fiend of Volunteers uh, took the flagstaff on which the Irish Republic flag had been proclaimed and they cut it into sections and they sent one section to Theresa Brayton out in New York with a letter from Constance Markovich and it was 
Theresa Brayton's most treasured possession. And these are the words of the letter from the Countess to Theresa. And she said, I cut this little chip from it and I'm sending it to you as a tribute to your beautiful verses that are an inspiration to all lovers of freedom and justice and more especially to us Republicans who realise how our exiles' poems are a lasting memorial of glory to our sufferings and our deathless cause and our unquenchable people will survive. Constant Markovich. And Theresa Brayton wrote these words in return. I stand before you, loaded guns. Your bayonets press against my breast. Strike if you dare, my soldier sons, and God's strong hand will do the rest. My banner flaunts down every wind. It holds no serf, it knows no crown. Tis freedom's call to all mankind, and who shall dare to drag it down? The words of Teresa Brayton, and I want to say that she wrote a brilliant uh, song uh, in t to pay a tribute to her own native county of Kildare and its importance in her struggle for freedom. She, in that words, and the, it's the title of that poem was The Choirs of Kildare, and I put it to music, and it's one of the tracks that are featured on my, the CD that with the Young Wolf Tones we, we, we performed to commemorate the events of the Easter Rebellion of 1960 and the Call of Aaron. The Bicycle there is a wonderful piece in the of poetry because it recognises the parts that uh, Wolf Tone, who was born in this county, Edward Fitzgerald, who led the, the, the rebellion of 1798, all the great men and women that were part indeed of this county and its aspirations for liberty and freedom. Theresa Brayton put the words and captured it all in a song, The Boys of Kildare, and here it is.